there is something about this place that keeps me coming back. Coming back and wanting to show others how amazing this country really is. Back when I was racing in Europe, life was a blur. One country to another, I had little time to stop and think. But what kept me sane then was coming here, to the Australian outback. I was born in Charleville, maybe that's my connection. It's the spirit of the outback that never leaves you. When I'm not commentating at Network 10, I'm running Darrell Beattie Adventures. So I hope you enjoy this fantastic journey across the Simpson Desert, and hey, you might see a few familiar faces. Birdsville, your last stop if you're heading west across the Simpson Desert. But there's one man around here that likes to call it the capital of Queensland. I'm in a pretty unique position. I'm a traditional owner, that is my country. Uh, Simpson Desert, real name is Mungatiri. Uh, and Mungatiri just means big sand hill country, and I think the name really reflects that, as you would probably uh, appreciate. It, to me, it's very different to, um, I guess, you know, not to downplay it, but a normal national park. You go and you camp and mm. you have your fires, but I find that people that you meet in the desert approach it very differently. And I don't know if that's a spiritual thing or not, but it, it certainly has a different feeling. Yeah, well, I'm glad, you, yeah, I'm glad you appreciate that because I do believe it is a spiritual thing. And I think it, it's a, a special group of people that come into this country these people are really prepared, but they want to have that experience of not only driving in one of the remotest deserts in the country, but also having that spiritual connection, I believe, with, uh, with the original people of the country, and I love it here. Well, getting off the plane at Birdsville was almost like a relief. I think it was a seven-hour flight from Brisbane, so when you finally got there, it, look, it was fantastic because we circled uh, Birdsville, we finally landed, obviously caught up with uh, Daryl and all the rest of the guys that have been there and Jack, and it was sort of, yeah, a bit of a relief to actually finally get there. Yeah, the Simpson Desert Tour, I guess we either start in Alice Springs, and for this particular one, we started at the iconic Birdsville pub, and it's hard because everyone has first night fever, there's that excitement of arriving at a pub, so you don't want people to wake up early the next morning feeling hungover, uh, riding off into deep sand for their first day if they've really limited deep sand riding. So um, normally after the first day, I find that people realise that 200, 250k days in deep sand is a lot of work, and most people are tucked up by about 8 o'clock. I think it's fantastic. I've never been on a, a tour group or a motorbike group before. And uh, when Daryl said, hey, tag along, I thought, how good this is this? is a good opportunity. And uh, it's great. I got uh, my son Jack's having a ride on a bike there, and it's really good. Uh, I've been talking with Daryl for, for a while about doing an adventure with him. And, uh, you know, thankfully, someone's now popped up and doing these sort of rides because it gives us an opportunity to be able to join in or link into any of the rides that, uh, that he does. And, and uh, look, he puts on a fantastic experience. You know, not only his Unimog that carries everything, but the way he prepares the bikes, um, his knowledge of tracks, uh, his safety, and everything that goes around his rides, I think, has been fantastic. And, uh, and I wanted to go across the Simpson again and obviously end back at uh, Alice to do the, uh, oh, sorry, I'd like to do, but to watch the Fink race. It's actually something I really wanted to do. I used to chat with a couple of mates that had seen the Darrell Beattie Adventures, and I was eyeing off the, the Cape York trip there once and worked with Darrell at Network 10 at the Grand Prix, and we said, come on, let's, let's get on one of these trips. And then Darrell and Dad have this Unimog uh, relationship where they just talk Unimogs all day. And we sort of thought, well, the, the calendar's aligned. Not being a full-time driver, I could get the opportunity to get some time off and, and go away. And to do it with Dad and join Daryl's trip, it, it was just an awesome uh, you know, idea. And got the bike, which matched Daryl's bike. And, um, and then Dad had the Mog there. And yeah, it just all sort of worked for us. It was great. Dad 
Day one of our adventure has us heading west from Birdsville along the QAA line to Popple Corner. From there we pick up the French line for a short distance before making camp for the first night. Day two we continue west along the French line then make a left turn and head south past Lone Gum and onto the Rig Road where again we head west for Linnage Junction where we make camp for the night. Day three, we ride the Colson track north, then rejoin the famous French line and head out of the sand dunes. A quick stop at Dalhousie Springs for a swim and then on to Mount Dare. Day four is our biggest day as we head north along the Bins track, past the Old Andado homestead. From here, we continue north and through some of the most spectacular countryside on the Old Andado track to Alice Springs. Day five, we head south from Alice and pick up the old Garn Railway line and head towards Fink to take in the famous desert race. Long day today, this is the start of it. Um, I think we all wanted a bit more sleep last night, but the first night I just got to a few people and um, might be a few sore heads this morning, but this coffee's going to get us going, and then um, we've got a bit of a run out to Big Red, and then across west, and we don't stop until we see Elvis, I think. I don't know, we keep going for a long way. I haven't been back here since 96, so it's nice to be back. The count hasn't changed too much. It expanded a little bit, but it hasn't changed too much. So uh, you're looking forward to uh, watching the sunrise, get to Big Red, and, uh, and then it go across the start, the start the trek across. We'll do 210 today, so today's our biggest day. We'll go from Birdsville over Big Red, uh, follow the track out to a massive salt pan, which is up early, we ride 18 k's around a salt pan, and then we'll go over the hill into Popple, South Australia, Northern Territory and Queensland, all three states meet, and then we'll hit some of the best stuff on the French line, um, about 40 k's of deep sand and head into camp. The ride up Big Red is, is pretty easy on a motorcycle. Um, it's a great time for me just to have a visual of the group, to see who, I guess, has told Porkies about their ability when they've signed up. Um, some guys struggle initially and they gain that experience as we go. But yeah, we certainly know where people are going to be in order through the remaining part of the trip. Well, sitting on top of Big Red was quite amazing because, you know, I remember it being so much bigger, but, you know, still a, a massive amount of sand. But, uh, you know, sitting on the bike on top of Big Red, then you finally drop off and then you drive down it, or ride down it, and then that begins your journey across the Simpson. It's, it's, one, it's an amazing feeling because you go, you've got the sun behind you, you're going west, and, uh, and of course, you know you've got uh, multiples and many hundreds of dunes in front of you to go across. I mean, riding in sand for me is one of the luckiest things because I grew up in sand, although it was white sand, not red, that we're going to get in the Simpson. But it's, it's extremely difficult. You've got to really be committed and you've got to maintain speed. And it's something where if you haven't grown up on the sand, you know, it takes a bit of getting used to. And the bikes with the big 20 litre tank, it's a bit like having a 20 litre oil drum in between your, your knees on a little bike. It's, it makes it a bit difficult to put the sand in there. You've just got to maintain the commitment and hopefully not to have many letdowns. Mate, it's good fun to get out there and get into it. I really enjoyed that. It's, it's just good fun, isn't it? Going across the, the, the flats here, you just get, get that run up. Yeah. You know you're going to have to work hard going up. Yeah. Just hang on. And it's good, you know, you pop over the crest, you don't know what's coming. So in the road, sometimes it goes left or right, and you, you've got the back wheel in the air, and you feel like you're doing 100k, and you're only doing 30, but that's good. <laughs> Craig, as expected, um, was a really good rider on two wheels, rode really well in the sand. I don't think he'd done a lot of sand riding, so um, I was quite impressed with the way Lansy rode a motorbike. Oh, look, it was, it was definitely an eye opener to have an off so early on, and uh, you know, it's, it, in a sense, yeah, it was good to get it over and done with. Um, but it was, of course, it was in the sand, and it was such a slow speed, you just literally fall off the bike. And it's like falling onto a mattress. So for me, it was great to get it out and done with. But the same token, it keeps you keeps you sharp, keeps you on your toes, because you know at any time that can happen again. Don't go straight. I didn't realise Lansy was the first one to crash, but um, I was I was sweep rider that particular day that Craig fell down. But I certainly got to hear all the stories when I arrived. 
it was quite amazing to go to Popper Corner. You know, you got basically South Australia, Northern Territory, Queensland, and obviously GPS has come into this world. And uh, you know, you're right. Like they weren't far apart from where they surveyed it many, many in the 1800s to where it obviously is now. So uh, you know, the the, uh, uh, the geo guys back then were pretty good and pretty clever about uh, how they marked it all out. Uh, well, riding in the sand I thought was going to be a little bit easier than what it was, to be honest. I think that uh, my experience has mainly been on dirt, but uh, to get into the sand dunes, the first day or so, you had to get let go of the bike and, let, in a sense, let it uh, wander underneath your legs and your arms, stick to a track, follow the track, and of course, you know, every uh, sand dune you go to, it's blind. So you don't know whether it goes straight over, goes left, goes right. Um, and of course, you don't know oncoming traffic. So all those elements keep you on your toes, especially every time you go up over a dune. How was your day? I'm pretty good, I think. Yeah, mate, it was really, really good. Oh, big eye-opener for me. Um, Craig's probably a bit better on the bike, but I hung in with him a bit there for most of the day, but that last 40, 50 k. Pretty good, eh? I think it's always one of those things. You start off really fresh in the morning, so everyone's keen and eager, and you're blazing down the road, not realising you're going to do over 200 kilometres. So, um, you know, we're doing like 40 kilometre blocks. So every time you pull up, it's like, oh, yeah, not too bad. And then it's like, oh, man, my arms are starting to get sore. <laughs> it's so, true, yeah. though, isn't it? Because you think 200k, and then this morning we'd done, what, 160, and you think, oh, this is going to be an easy day. And then all of a sudden you get that. But as, as Jack said, like, those it. last probably 40 k the most probably entertaining to watch. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I had a little sleep laid down, so uh, it's... Uh, <laughs> it's I, nearly, I nearly crashed into <laughs> you <Yeah. India. laughs> when you were down there. You do. Oh, well, you're going to love your night in your bunkers, so... It's going to be good fun. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, there's definitely a system. You got to, you got to. So it's like military. You've got to do it in 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 uh, chronological order. Because if you don't do it, you bugger it up. Pack everything up, put everything in together, load it all up. Have these chain of people putting everything back into the Unimog. Uh, you know, and then of course, uh, you know, poor old rockets running away and uh, you know, looking after everything else. Yep, day two. At least I know what I'm in for now. Yesterday was actually, yeah, a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, today's a. I think similar kilometres, 30 k's of more fun, and then we open up and see what the 450s can do. Well, I can say that bell helmet works now. <laughs> um, I've got the most air out of anyone over the front of the bars, I reckon. <laughs> I'm good, though. So we'll sign you up for Nitro Circus or something now. Yeah, I've got a bit of respect for that. That guy that did that triple backflip, because I yeah, did a triple yeah. front flip then, but didn't land it. <laughs> <laughs> Landed without the bike? No, uh, I just, yeah, I, I didn't, I won't say I was riding too hard. I just, I let you boys pass, yeah. and then Sammy's just come up in front of me, and I've just, oh, hang on. And I lost the road in front of me, and then I was off. Cut Sammy's fault. Well, I'm not going to blame anyone. I was riding. <laughs> <laughs> My fault. Well, I've got no radio now. My cable's busted. I ended up a fair way from the bike. As long as you're not hurt. Exactly. In the middle of absolutely nowhere, in the Simpson Desert, it appears as though there's a McDonald's family restaurant opening soon. I'll be interested to see next year on Darrell Beatty Adventures if there's a drive through here, and we might be able to grab a coffee next next time we come through. Plenty good fun. The thing is you just don't know what's on the other side. So you don't want to hit it too hard, but you, you get to the top and you go, shit, I want to go back and have another crack at it. But it's good fun, it's good rhythm. Sort of, uh, yeah, you just got to stay on top of the sand. If you get, get buried in it, it's bloody hard. Yeah. I mean, you use most of your energy just digging yourself out, but if you can keep the speed up, it's great fun. Yeah, that was good, that last 6K. So, um, a bit faster, a bit more, a bit less of the dunes and bits and pieces, so it was good hard riding, good luck trail riding. And, um, yeah, we had a good fang, Craig, myself, and Rocket Ronnie, and, um, Oh, we had a bit of fun and got a smile from ear to ear after that and got my confidence back, so we're good to go. The 30 k's this morning was all sort of that uh, French line that's sort of more the the, uh, the sandy trail, and then we got into open runs, and then uh, that last six kilometres there, we had, we had a ball. Jack and I and, uh, and Rocket was uh, leading, the, leading the trio, and uh, it was actually, I think you got some good footage of it, but uh, yeah, she was quick going through the scrub, that's for sure. <laughs> Thank you. 
That was really cool actually. It's just the terrain so different now. It's quite flat and the dunes are spread apart, but the riding is just pure. It's seriously good. I couldn't keep up with the boys up the front, but um, no, I really enjoyed that. The highlight today was uh, it was having a like the tracks opening up a little bit and then actually having a bit of a crack with the bike and and using the 450 power it's got. It's uh, it is really good. So it's uh, a bit of fun. I know it's not a race, but uh, of course we're all. Uh, Braces at heart, and uh, you know, when you got the other guys a little bit quicker, you always sort of tag on the back of them and uh, have a bit of fun. So uh, we're all here, we're all sort of got some stories to tell about the day, so it's been a successful day. Oh, look, it was amazing that the setup that he's got in the Unimog, you know, it is it's fantastic. You know, he's, uh, you know, for me, it's it's great to see he's put a lot of thought into it. You know, he's got his two fridges, two freezers. Um, he's got all the water. He's got his barbecue. He's got everything else. He's got his blue Honda overalls, which I reckon he stole in 1950. Um, he's got everything that's going on, and uh, but he's a character. Like, I think that's part of what the whole experience of doing a, a ride with Daryl is, is all about, you know. He cooks some fantastic food, like there's steak that come out of uh, Tasmania that he cryvacks and sends up, and I don't know how in the hell he does it, but he puts on a massive feed. And I think that's uh, it's one of those things that's just great to sit around a campfire in anywhere. Um, and again, the whole group got together, you know, we all we all got together, we made sure that the tents were all up, you know, we had had somewhere to sit, we had a fireplace to, to, to sit around and tell some stories of the day, the days that went on, what's coming up tomorrow, you have a bit of fun with and, and it's really great to be able to mix with, you know, even Larry, like with Larry coming on board, you know, and he was so experienced and, and the knowledge that he brought about all the, you know, the Aboriginal, uh, you know, landmarks and where they'd come from and what had happened, like even to hear Larry and like, you know, probably hated him when I was racing against him, but to actually sit with him now and, uh, and actually hear his experience is, is quite amazing. Oh, I'm feeling good actually. I think the first day you sort of end up with a little bit of soreness and then yesterday it was sort of like, it actually plateaued and today I'm actually feeling good. So I'm looking forward to it. Bit of a swim, bit of a relaxed stretch, a little bit of yoga. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a good day. Yeah. Well, Dalhousie, I remember back in 96, and it's one of those natural springs and it's in the middle of nowhere. Um, you know, you pull up, you know, get off the bike, strip down in your underwear, basically in the shorts, get into the into the, uh, in the spring, which is about 40 degrees. It's quite amazing. But to feel a little fish inside the, uh, in the spring to eat all your dead skin and everything else is quite a bit eerie. But to just at least relax, float around, uh, unwind for, for half an hour, 40 minutes, we were there. Then to obviously to get your dirty clothes back on, get back on the bike and ride again, it, uh, it was a lot of fun. All right, back on the saddle. Back on the horse. Giddy up. Where we go. We knew it was going to be a long slog to get to Alice Springs, but uh, of course I didn't appreciate the, the bull dust. I, I had no idea. Daryl actually stopped, pulled up, said, look, guys, spread out. Make sure you got a good, clear vision because the bull dust is going to linger. There wasn't a lot of air uh, or wind around at the time. And of course, we're all going, yeah, 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 whatever, does. And we will blaze off. And then there was this, like, chain of command. First rider goes down, second rider goes down, third rider goes down. I went down um, all in the bull dust because you can't see. So you're in and out of these tracks, and then all of a sudden you see this biker laying across in front of you. So for me, that was an amazing experience to be able to see all that in the old tracks. We come across some four wheel drives, which I didn't even know they were there until you actually going past them. Um, it was just an experience that you never would experience unless you go through that uh, element. But Daz was right, like by that stage, we'd all spread out. We all could then see. Yeah, hey, the dust is so thick. I mean, you, you think you're giving yourself enough gap, and then as soon as you catch it, you just got to slow up, and that, that caught me off guard. I slowed up too much try, trying to see, and um, and we nearly had a multi-bike pile-up in the middle of nowhere. But good fun. It was a good bit of road, but just under 100 k's there, and that um, no, was enjoyable. Yeah, I mean, the Andado Station was an unbelievable story. Um, it, it, you know, uh, originally. It was a homestead and they, they were very isolated, which they still are, and now it's a bunch of people from around Australia share the maintenance of the place. The whole thing was a time warp, but you know, it was good to see what it was like because it hasn't changed and there's still people living in there and yeah, there was a real opener for the whole group and you know, for me in particular to see what you know what it was then is still how it is today. It's bloody good, isn't it? It's like we have Oh, look, it was what we come for. We wanted to come and watch the Fink. We, we left Alice, went down, just out of Alice, they do the prologue. To see the top guys ride around was uh, mind-blowing, how much faster they are than anyone else. 
It was unbelievable. We were just basically standing and three or four metres on the other side of the road is the, is the, the racetrack, I guess, the, the think track. And, you know, we were standing on there putting cameras up and it felt weird standing on a live track, but, you know, we were waiting and there's time between them and the buggies come ripping through and they were incredible. I mean, the first four or five buggies uh, were, were in a league of their own. Those guys, the suspension travel on the buggies was awesome and just watch them commit through. And, you know, they're getting close to the end, so they're a little bit wounded, a little bit tired. I was, blown, I was blown away. Like, to see the speed of the buggy come through and, like, he didn't lift. And you think, oh, and, like, you know, as race drivers, you go, oh, yeah, yeah, you take that on board. But being outside of watching it from the inside is probably two different things. But seeing the buggy go through and just watching these wheels just do this, then, of course, you know, you're listening. Uh, yeah, bear bike's coming. And you knew it would be Toby because, obviously, from last year, and uh, he, didn't, he didn't lift either. And, like, he was, like, minutes away from the buggy. And, like, that's impressive. In 220 kilometres down one way, to be in a couple of minutes of, of, a, of a pro buggy, which you now 600 plus horsepower, um, you know, it is quite spectacular. But he made it look easy. Like, you look at someone like that going, oh, yeah, he'd be bright. And then, of course, you watch everyone else come through and it's getting harder and harder and harder. And they leave a four hour time frame for you to do the 220 kilometres. Not everyone makes it, but he just made it look you know, effortless. We truly live in an amazing country. And the Fink Desert race is, is equivalent to Bathurst. Well, it's, it's a great unknown in Australia. Its status should be at least level with Bathurst. Uh, yeah, we've just, what, driven 250 k's down and back from Fink. We must have passed 20,000 campers, families. Uh, everyone was having a ball. Yeah. But it's just, it's just not known in Australia, but it's, it's fantastic. It's right up there with the Baja 1000 you know, in America. It's fantastic. So people, if you want to do something, get up and have a look at the Fink. To be able to get away most of the way across the Simpson, no mobile phone service. Uh, for me, that was just incredible. To be able to have that getaway experience, you know, you know, to have that recharge the batteries, no technology, being able to do the old fashioned talking around a campfire was, was unbelievable. It was really well worth it. Well, it is a venture of a lifetime. But for me, it's one of those things that, uh, you know, I have great memories. I've got great connections with people that I've met along the way. And of course, do I want to do it again? Hell yeah. Like, I want to go back and do it again. If you like bike riding and you're interested to have a look around our tremendous country, get on board Daryl Beatty Adventures. It was a fantastic trip. Far exceeded my ambitions and, and you know what I thought of it all. I, I didn't know what to expect and we got to take in all the sites, have a good look around, a bit of a history lesson along the way and just have a really good time with a bunch of good people.